Yeah, I think everyone will just enjoy the lunch, right? So we are going to the afternoon session. This session we are very honored to invite Microsoft, the software engineer, to, in, in, <coughs> to share us about the uh, current usage for machine learning in the industry. Thanks for welcome to the event. Thank you for joining my session. Um, so in this session, uh, it's going to be so um, I think this session is going to be more informal because um, I'm not going to I'm not going to show you a lot of slides, but then I will be doing a little bit on uh, some use case sharing. Yeah. So uh, I'm a software engineer uh, at Microsoft. Um, so my day to day work is working al uh, alongside with uh, our customers, uh, doing coding on um, different uh, pilot projects and POC on AI and machine learning, IoT stuff like that. So. Um, I don't know if you uh, attended my previous session. So in, the, in my previous session, I covered a little bit on um, uh, our Azure Machine Learning SDK, which is um, uh, publicly available uh, right now, and it's generally available next month. And you can leverage this SDK to do end-to-end -end ML scenario. So when if you are a data scientist or if you are working on um, data analytical stuff, um, I would say this SDK will benefit a lot in terms of the um, basically in terms of um, doing optimization, doing data pre-processing, uh, data crunching. So um, all these kind of scenarios, um, this SDK will be able to help you with that. So um, just a very quick recap on our machine learning pipeline and also uh, the overall service um, that we provide uh, for you guys. So first of all, um, I don't know if you, any of you are new, new to Azure. Um, so we have a bunch of um, data stores. So we have unstructured, structured, and graph uh, storage for you to choose. And of course, your data set can be on premises, so you have you can have the data stored locally, um, and then we have uh, in the ingestion pipeline for you to um, ingest any data from any data source that you have, and then uh, we have a bunch of tools. Uh, for example, the SDK that I've mentioned to do data preparation, say normalization, transformation, visualization, etc. And of course, in terms of uh, the model construction and also um, training. So um, I would say uh, you can do everything locally, but then uh, if you want scalability, of course, uh, cloud is your choice, and you can deploy your uh, model in the container, right? And in a compute target, for example, a Kubernetes cluster, um, or, uh, or at your edge device. So we are seeing a lot of customers, they are um, deploying, for example, a computer vision module at the Edge device and uh, running it, running it in a factory um, or any other um, scenarios, and of course, um, I cover something called Auto ML. So um, I think it's uh, the toughest, toughest, toughest task for a data scientist would be choosing the right model or the best model to uh, for your scenario, right? So. Um, we introduce something called AutoML to sweep through different classification or regression models um, for your project. And most importantly, if you are dealing with neural networks, um, we have hyperparameter tuning service. Yeah, we package it into uh, a service, a module called Hyperdrive, so you can just import it directly from our, uh, from our SDK again. And you predefine the number of um, neural net that you want to you want us to sweep through, and also the batch size, and also the learning rate, etc. And then we will find all the the optimized the most optimal parameters for your model to use, and um, try to maximize the performance. And I've mentioned a little bit about deployment, right? So. Um, you can either containerize everything and then publish them as uh, as a web service and then consume it in your end application. So actually, I, I find it quite interesting that um, people nowadays, they, for example, data scientists, they are very good at constructing model, but then they don't know how to consume them. They don't know how to form an end-to-end -end pipeline. They don't know how to operationalize things. 
So, uh, but with Azure, you will be able to uh, streamline this process and um, deploy your end-to-end -end scenario at ease. So, yeah, so this slide talks about uh, operationalization. Um, sorry. Yeah, so basically, um, in terms of the, um, the overall deployment, um, I mentioned about the SDK, right? Another core concept is the workspace, where we uh, package all the um, applications, the services together into a single panel for you to uh, manipulate and for you to um, go through step by step um, your end to end uh, process, like data pre processing, um, image management, model management, deployments, etc. So you can do everything. Uh, through the um, ML workspace, but I'm not gonna do any demo around this um, in this session. So that's gonna be my second last slide. So it's um, this is just a brief overview on how um, uh, your end-to-end -end ML scenario would look like. So um, you will see there is um, model registration there, and then um, your image registry. Oops. And also uh, model deployments and monitoring. Um, right. Oh, this is the, the last slide. So um, I don't know if you uh, if you guys have been using uh, a GPU power machines. Can you see a sort of hands if you are using like GPU power machines to to do like model training? A few. Okay. Yeah. So um, nowadays we work with Intel on um, um, using FPGA to uh, even enhancing the, uh, your speed to shorten your training time and, um, and also we are using the ASIC strip uh, if you are talking about LT Edge device, etc. So um, typically people will use a CPU machine for um, some simple training, for example, if you are using Scikit Learn library, I think CPU is fine. But when you are talk, but uh, when we are talking about TensorFlow neural net, then probably you might need a GPU power machine. And for heavy duty workload, then of course um, you can use our uh, FPGA powered platform to shorten your training time. And also the ASIC chip, um, if you are using, if you are dealing with um, uh, your edge device, and uh, we are we are seeing lots of company, they are now deploying um, machine learning images uh, into the edge device in the factory to do all sort of uh, predictive maintenance, um, fraud detection, anomaly detection, etc. So um, the next thing I'm going to show you is um, a developer block. So I am coming from a department called commercial software engineering. And uh, we work, uh, basically we cope with our partners and customers on different projects, on different topics. And uh, usually by the end of the sprint, uh, we will be writing up uh, case studies on each of the projects that uh, we were involved in. And we'll publish them into this website called the uh, developer blog. Um, so you see all the code stories available, available right here. and. Um, and most of these uh, code stories will include. We'll try our best to include uh, the source code as well. Yeah, because uh, we try to open source everything. Of course, not the confidential data from customers, right? But then uh, we try to open source stuff um, for all the developers um, to uh, to see. And but of course, this session I will be talking a little bit more about some of the um, machine learning projects and deep learning projects. Um, for you guys, because I think most of you are Python developers, right? Um, so in terms of uh, deep learning um, or object detection, um, we are seeing a trend that uh, nowadays customers want us to not just detecting objects, but they want to do image segmentation as well. And so uh, I think previously uh, there is a trend on uh, doing image classification, object detection. But nowadays, they really want to be more precise and uh, ask us to segment out um, the objects out of the um, images. So um, for this particular scenario, uh, we are talking about like doing 
bug detection here, and um, we have our out of the box uh, labeling tool called uh, VOTT, Visual Object Tagging Tool. Um, or you uh, maybe you are using a similar tool called uh, Label IMG. So I think uh, they are more or less similar. But then for this uh, VOTT tool, uh, you'll be able to export all your tags, all the, the tags uh, in YOLO format or TensorFlow format or uh, our CNTK Connect Toolkit format. So Connect Toolkit is our uh, our own um, deep learning framework. Um, so uh, developed by Microsoft and it's all op open source as well. So if you look through these kind of uh, blocks, you will see all the um, architectural diagram and um, how it's gonna look like um, in production environment. So this is these are all real use cases uh, we co-developed with um, our customers actually, and also some of the results and a little clip here as well and. Um, most of the time, when we have a machine learning, when we are working on the machine learning with our customer, we will set up um, the overall pipeline before we actually start the hack. So what I meant by that is, uh, for example, if um, they want to do uh, hardcore training, then we might need uh, a GPU powered machine, a GPU powered virtual machine, to help us with that. Or if they are just doing some lightweight testing, then um, the stuff that I introduced um, earlier. In, in my previous session. So for example, Azure Notebook uh, would be uh, suitable for them. Um, and the next one that I'm gonna show you is, um, yeah, I've mentioned a lot about image segmentation. So this is um, another scenario where we uh, work with, uh, really, the farmers um, in the state on um, basically uh, analyzing the satellite, satellite images of the farms and to see their overall condition. Um, but not just that, we are going to uh, um, uh, segment out all the uh, outlines of the, uh, of the field and also the farming condition as well. So as you can see here, we have different types of uh, farm, for example, uh, uh, a grass waterway, a terrace, um, uh, a filter strips, contour buffer strips, etc. So we have to label all these um, data set, basically all the satellite images beforehand based on uh, this, uh, based on this um, rules or based on the um, based on these tags, and then we will uh, consume all this data set into our um, our CNN. Uh, model. So usually, if you are doing image segmentation, it's gonna be um, using a CNN, a convolution neural net, um, to do it. And yeah, so these are all the um, some of the results generated by the model based on the uh, image uh, sent to the model. And we have some detailed. Um, summary on the concept behind. So uh, for example, the introduction to UNET, uh, which is an autoencoder, and how mask RCNN works. So I don't know if you, if you have tried our RCNN, mask RCNN before, but it is a very, it's a super powerful uh, model for doing image segmentation. Um, if you have some nice label data, of course, um, and within this case study, we will also include uh, the results. So whether it's good or bad, we'll also include them as our learning and also for, for you guys uh, as your reference as well. Um, right. So these are the, all the aerial data and um, we are doing tons of pre-processing work before we can feed this data set into a machine learning model. Um, so it's not just about labeling the data, but you have to more normalize them, right? So if the images are at different sizes, different aspect ratio, different contrast rate, that's not good for your model. You have to standardize everything. So you have to uh, do normalization uh, to make them into the uh, uh, same size, same aspect ratio, same contrast rate, so that your model can um, easily in, uh, learn um, 
the content within your images and give you a better result. So um, that's the um, RMAS RCNN results. Um, and also, most importantly, if you click on the ripple right here, uh, you'll be redirected to um, the full source code of this particular project. So uh, feel free to uh, reuse any of the code uh, published by our team because they are all open sourced and um, uh, we hope you can uh, leverage on our success and uh, develop a better product uh, for your company, right? So, um, another scenario that I want to discuss is um, the, in the retail industry. So, this is um, dealing with a retail customer where they want to um, do some reverse image search, right? So, they have an inventory of different types of clothes, um, um, I mean, uh, trainers, accessories for men and women, but they want the staff to act to to be able to actively search for something by just taking a picture of um, the cloth and then uh, do a reverse search and get back the the data the the the, um, the images or the products that they are looking for. Um, we have something called the custom vision API, but uh, that is uh, at API level, so it's not that customizable. But of course, you can still. Um, train it with your own data set, label them, um, and output it as, uh, as um, uh, um, basically you can output the module, the model uh, um, for use in your app Android device or iOS device. But for this case, we are going to uh, work on a customized module, um, basically a custom model um, to do the um, object detection and classification. So these are some of the um, results. So we have the actual product image and also the stock image right here as the training data. And um, yeah, so basically we really want to, uh, what they want to do is to query the image uh, by uploading uh, an image of the product and also, um, and then they will find the closest image um, for the staff. Actually, these are some of the results. Um, and you can see here, that's the actual product and all the um, generated um, images uh, by the model. And again, we have um, the results and some of the um, even if even if it is not good, we will still um, include them right here. And also, um, as you can see, we are just um, traversing through different uh, models: some PCA models, some um, JST models, um, etc., etc., and find the best uh, best one for um, image retrieval. And apart from that, I want to quickly show you um, some of the work that I have done uh, related to uh, doing image segmentation. So actually, I'm working closely with a customer, a chemical uh, manufacturer, on uh, a project which is to uh, streamline the quality check process. So they are manufacturing a lot of paints uh, products. And uh, if you want to uh, see whether the paint product that you're manufacturing is uh, good or bad, then you have to uh, try to look at the microscopic view of this of these paints and see um, how dense it is. For example, the number of bubbles uh, per image. And also, you want to really precisely uh, segment out each of the intact bubble and also the area and uh, uh, and the center pos uh, center position. So um, the the overall um, quality checking process is very tedious if it is done by uh, human being, right? So you have to look into images one by one and try to see if the bubbles are intact. But then with uh, deep learning, you can just fit into um, different Python libraries or different machine learning models to segment out all these bubbles easily. 
So let me show you uh, some of the results that we've got. Um, So actually, we are using a very powerful Python library and running it on the um, our Azure notebook. Um, so it's called the Watershed Library. Yeah. So Watershed Library is uh, being widely used. Um, yeah, being widely used in uh, image segmentation project and pre-processing projects. So these are the. Um, so this is actually the uh, raw data that we feed into a model, and. We are applying the uh, watershed library, so it is uh, it is included in OpenCV actually. So um, we are directly applying the um, this OpenCV library uh, onto the data and try to segment out um, the bubbles, and um, we are doing a lot of thresholding to make it to make the contrast uh, much more prominent, and um, and this is done by using the scikit image. So. Uh, there are two versions of this watershed library. So one is available in um, OpenCV, and another one is available in Scikit Image Library. And yeah, just want to briefly show you how easy it is. You can do some lightweight um, data preprocessing and model training within the Azure Notebook. Yeah, so I'm doing a lot of um, thresholding work and using the uh, finding the contour. So, uh, meaning that I'm doing something called edge detection, right? So we have to uh, understand the picture. So allow the model to understand the picture by learning uh, what is regarded as a proper edge or or, prop, uh, or which of the bubbles are that are actually not regarded as an intact bubble. So we have to. Uh, do all sort of labeling um, before we can um, actually operationalize our model. And um, let me go back to my developer block here. Yep, and another most common scenario in terms of uh, deep learning or machine learning is um, OCR. So um, optic character recognition. So we have uh, an API called uh, Computer Vision API, which includes uh, OCR capability. And the V2 version, the version 2 version, is actually quite good. Um, so it's it's able to detect all kinds of uh, even very ugly handwritten uh, materials and documents um, with um, at a very high accuracy. Um, so we so this scenario is um, actually working with EY Anderson Yang on extracting most important um, information from um, different contracts and different documents. So as you can see, uh, usually um, in terms of an OCR scenario, you will have a standard uh, template or of the document that you are gonna be analyzing and you have fields uh, that are handwritten one or you have the printed data on the document as well. Um, we are writing a custom model to first of all identify the margin where we are going to apply the um, our again some uh, CNN model um, onto the data set and um, understand what uh, what's what what, uh, what are written in the documents. So you have the bounding box right here, right? So these are all the, um, of course, you have to label all these data beforehand and so that you, you would get these kind of results in the end. So we have bounding box uh, circling around the um, um, handwritten signature or the dates, um, some other useful information. And um, yeah, so it's your choice on whether you want to use the out-of-the-box API or you build a custom model like this. But usually, if you are dealing with uh, very messy templates, so you don't actually have a standard format uh, 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 for your documents, then you will have to build a custom model um, to do the um, character detection rather than uh, using our out-of-the-box OCR API. So similarly, we have um, some of the results um, being given here, and um, 
the accuracy rate, etc. Yeah, and also I want to mention another scenario in the uh, manufacturing domain. So um, usually uh, if there is a leakage in uh, pipes underground, then uh, you will have engineers actually listening to the, the audio clips of those, um, of those pipes, like the sound generated by those pipes, and detect those an anomaly. But uh, these days, uh, people are trying to use uh, deep learning to um, understand the image of the leakage. What I meant by leak, image of the leakage is that um, we actually have the video, the audio clip here, right? Um, we are applying a Fourier transform um, onto this audio clip to make a, so, so that we can convert it into a visualized um, data. And again, we are, you can see there are a lot of spikes, right? So we are labeling the spikes which indicates there is a leakage in the pipe. Yeah. And actually there is a sample leak audio right here. And this is after fast Fourier transform. So this is dealing with uh, digital signal processing. And again, we are choosing a CNN model to analyze um, the data here. And, um, and also we have um, some source code for your reference as well. So um, for this example, we are using our own uh, deep learning model toolkit called uh, Cognitive to get CNTK, but uh, nowadays I think most of our customers they use TensorFlow um, or YOLO uh, in terms of uh, if they are doing image classification or object detection. Um, yeah, and I would also like to share another scenario that I worked on um, last year in Redmond. So. Basically, we are trying to convert all the um, police sketches into realistic images, right? So uh, we actually got this data set from CUHK. So they actually asked uh, some professionals, um, sketches to do all the um, hand sketches of the, of the staff and students. And um, the middle corner, right, I think the rightmost corner is the um, actual image of that person and the middle column is actually the, the result generated by our deep learning model. So, um, so we worked on different types of people. So we worked on celebrity data as well. So this is the um, first version. So we basically scraped all the um, celebrity images and, um, from the web. And the left mo most corner, this is not um, hand sketches. These are actually machine generated images because we don't have uh, that manpower to <laughs> to create so much hand sketches like uh, what CUHK did. So we are applying some um, edge detection algorithm um, to basically uh, form all the edges um, of the original image. So this is done when we have a uh, limited amount of data set. But after, um, after, we, after getting more data, you will see um, the result is quite good. Um, but of course, the bottom one, I think um, that's the orientation problem. As you can see, we don't have uh, so much pictures that are at this orientation. So um, it's going to be tough if you have limited data set uh, around this um, specific area. But usually, um, if you have uh, enough, number of, uh, enough amount of data, you'll be able to achieve something similar. And for this project, we also open source the, our source code on uh, GitHub as well. So um, yeah, so this is the repository for this uh, particular project. And um, yeah, you can actually follow my GitHub for any other future projects that I'm working on. I'll try my best to publish everything on my GitHub. So my GitHub name is um, TIK. YAU. Yeah, you can just um, follow me on GitHub and um, you will see what projects I'm currently working on. And lastly, I think I want to mention a little bit about um, NLP. Because 
just now I mentioned a lot about um, deep learning and machine learning on uh, doing um, image processing, right? Right. So. So I, I don't know if you if any of you here have heard of the squat data set. Any anyone? Do you know the squat data set? No. One of you. Okay, cool. So this is the um, standard question answering data set. Um, so actually this is kind of like a competition between different uh, tech giant company or different vendors or different research centers around the world. So they are working on this squat data set, which, is, which are all coming from Wikipedia. So we uh, extract all the uh, articles from Wikipedia and label them. Um, and then we are asking the public to uh, work on it. And so if we have a question uh, that are coming from um, this squat data set, your model should be able to answer it, right? So this is talking about uh, machine comprehension. So reading comprehension by the computer. So understanding the context of uh, the, the data and being able to answer the question. So I think right now our, our rank, uh, our position dropped a little bit. So we are now at, um, where is it? Oh, I can't find Microsoft. Oh, we are at number eight, position eight. So I think, um, yeah, I think Google is leading and there are a bunch of, uh, Companies in China, they are doing very well. So Alibaba is on, uh, is at the eighth, the fifth position. Um, yeah, so we are on the eighth now. I think re I remember last month when I checked this, we are, we are at the very top, like the second position or something. But I think we haven't published our result yet. And um, when you click on the Explore 2.0 here, you will see uh, they actually uh, publish our uh, results here. So Microsoft Research Asia, so which is based in. Um, Beijing and also there's another one in Shanghai coming up soon and you can choose whatever topic um, say for example I want to look at a construction related data set so this is the um, article uh, coming from the squad data set related to um, the construction field and on the right hand side these are all the um, questions, generated questions, and also the predicted um, answer uh, by our Microsoft uh, Euronet model. So yeah, I mean, it's quite powerful, right? right? It's not just, because um, when we talk about NLP, it's more like, oh, we are going to extract the intent or the, ethics, uh, the, or the entities from uh, some content, and that's it. But actually, it's not. Uh, we are talking about machine comprehension, actively generating answers to different questions if you have a large amount of uh, training data. So um, yeah, so this is the um, uh, uh, an interactive tool for you to um, get a better understanding of um, how we're doing with this um, squad data set challenge. Yeah, yeah so I think um, before I end my presentation, I just want to mention about the um, basic learning platform for all of you. So if you uh, didn't attend my previous session, so um, we have a very interactive platform, learning platform for everyone for free. Um, it's uh, role-based and hands-on, doing hands-on training, um, trying out our different services available on, on Azure. So we have a built-in code editor uh, within your browser, so you don't need to install um, anything, um, and it's kind of like uh, playing games. So you unlock challenges when we, uh, when you finish an exercise, and you will be uh, earning a badge as well after you complete a challenge. Um, some of the most some of the interesting uh, modules include like oh, you can work on neural net with TensorFlow on our data science virtual machine. Um, or you can, if you attended my previous session, it's on um, Azure Notebooks. So you can, you will have a chance to um, work on a project with um, the Azure Notebook, Jupyter Notebook, or in a Docker container, uh, or using the PyTorch library, all built in within our machine uh, data science virtual machine. 
and you can just scan this QR code um, to access to the uh, learning platform and um, and also you can visit our booth outside if you want to know more about um, about this. So any questions related to my speech today? Yes, sorry, Dylan. Yeah. I will run out of time. Sure. So if anyone has a question, I believe that Dylan will stay here longer. So please, the uh, there the literally, he will give you a big service for you. Let's thank you, Dylan, again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, where is the next speaker? Uh, Arnold, Arnold, Arnold.